everybody. Welcome Ben Yim to our show. This is the Jungle Slayer Business Podcast and it's an interview. So welcome to the show, Ben. Can you thank tell you, us a little you. bit yourself? Thank you for having me. So uh, I've been an entrepreneur in the health niche for 10 okay. years. Yeah. And i um, been working online mostly. Right. Yeah. That's a very long time, 10 years. <laughs> That's a very long time. That is a long so, time. So can you tell me what made you start entrepreneurship? I think I got tired of like the corporate life and climbing the ladder and being like an immigrant child. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's actually very hard to get into the mainstream. Right. Like no matter whoever says how diverse it is, there is that glass ceiling where they do want like mainstream people mm -hmm. in the higher up executive. And yes, there is like that one mm -hmm. ostrich token Asian person or like yeah, who's diversity. Very, who's very um, westernized. Right. Uh, so <laughs> there, there is that one token right. person, which again, as a immigrant child, like it's very hard to get into that corporate higher up executive. And so, that wasn't you. No, and I, I can't see myself playing the politics right, mm -hmm. saying everything politically right in terms of, you know, like just normal conversation. So if anything you said something wrong or politically not correct, they will mental note that. And no matter how hard you work, is you would just be there. And in the corporate, they won't move anyone who is hardworking. Yeah. Because like if you're hardworking, why would they move you? You you just you, you might as well stay put and be the hardworking cow. Wow. So like being in a, because I came from a ba uh, banking background. Yeah. So I work in a corporate banking. <laughs> it is a wealth program, right? Right, right, right. Uh, I would say, I, I, I guess. You don't have to be shy. You can just tell them your biggest success. Biggest success would be financial freedom and like location freedom. Sweet. Yeah. Okay, tell them about it. What is location freedom and what is financial freedom to you? To me, it's just like not worrying yeah. about like, this daily life and like being able to know because because being an entrepreneur you don't know when the next money is coming in <laughs> like there's no guarantee but being building like the foundation and having that that kind of security again yeah being an entrepreneur knowing that there's money coming knowing that you know whatever you built the system that I built is, is stable that can feed me right and have like a good life where Living in Vancouver is expensive, but like able to just maintain that lifestyle and be able to do it anywhere I want. Okay. So like just traveling, just still not being trapped in one location, one city. I think that's that's where my de definition of success was. Okay, so can you expand on that? Just going more detail. Like how? Like, yeah. Like what, what exactly is it? It's very mysterious right now. It just it sounds like the freedom. The desire that everybody wants, but what is it? You know, it's just traveling. Like I like I like the freedom yeah. of just traveling. I mean, your business. My business is in health, yeah. like health and wellness and nu right. nutrition. Because I because the way that we met is we met through a common friend, right? And we were having Chinese food for dinner. <laughs> that was the most delicious Chinese food, by the way. Yeah. And you did a lot of internet entrepreneurship where right. you were selling online yeah. you were creating content yeah. you have over six figures in i think over a couple hundred thousand followers on tiktok yeah. so that was huge so tell me about that um what would you think cost you to be a successful entrepreneur that's a very good question i think the grit isn't very important like the grit of just not giving up and still going at it day after day when you might not see yeah. anything <laughs> like I would say the first year it was really tough I did not because coming from a banking background mm -hmm. into the wellness I had no wellness background no health background um, my, my university degree was in education yeah. so like totally different wow. niche but then like the first year was really hard a lot of learning a lot of this perseverance going at it no matter because you don't see any success at all and it's just like a pitch dark road <laughs> tell me about that pitch dark road 
How do you get through it? Do you see a light on the end of the tunnel, or was it just pure darkness? Pure darkness. You had blinders on, and pure there's darkness. no light. You're like, oh, pure guide darkness. me. <laughs> pure darkness. Pure darkness, I would say, for a right. good eight, six, eight months. Okay. Uh, I would say, I like, giving up is always in the back of my mind, yeah. but it's always a choice where I already gave up my corporate job like for, for this lifestyle. Let me just ask you. Most people... People in the audience, right. they would start a side hustle first. Yes. And then they would quit their job. Yes. Once the monthly income is bigger, higher, yes. or maybe matches their monthly expenses. Right. But you did a total reverse. Uh -huh. You quit your job and then you become an entrepreneur. Yeah. How did that happen? I think it was just a leap of faith. And yeah. I think during that time, I, I had more of like, I was young, <laughs> like I was way younger. I was right. in my twenties, obviously. <laughs> then, yes. Ten and years I, ago, <laughs> and I felt like I have nothing to lose, right? Because like I can always go back to a job, um, but I don't suggest that to be honest, <laughs> because it's very, it, it creates a lot of anxiety. Yeah, like the, uh, too much uncertainty, and, and I feel like if you need to start an entrepreneur road. You don't really need to say, oh, I quit my full-time job. It's good to have a full-time job. But the thing is, having a full-time job, you're more likely to be tired. Mm -hmm. you no, know, you are you just have so many excuses once you get off at five. And, yeah. and you're less likely to pursue. But if you have like a fire under your ass and say, you, you have no money, <laughs> you're going to generate some money, right? So like for the first six to eight months, mm -hmm. I, I was just living off savings. Like, okay. Was it, were you fearful? You oh were shit! Yeah, watching the savings deplete yeah. every single month, right? Totally. Like, like, because there's expenses. Yeah. There's, even if you live, like, I lived in the minimum everything, like not spending, not going out, and it's still hard. But it's it's the I, I ask myself every day, like, is this really what I want? Is this really like worth it? <laughs> At the end of the day, like if. But I keep have to kind of brainwash myself, like, this is going to be worth it. This is going to be... So take it back. How do you brainwash yourself every day when you were not having enough money, right. you didn't have any income coming in, it's all expenses going out every single day, you don't have the safety net of a corporate job? Right. What do you say to yourself? I think I leverage a lot of, like, um, other people's success and a lot of, like, videos. And What do you mean by that? So I would look at other entrepreneurs or other uh, people who've done it, and I listen to their stuff. Like I just brainwash mm -hmm. it with their success and their story, and using their light to shine some kind of light in my dark tunnel, <laughs> and and <laughs> hoping you know, hoping that it would light the dark tunnel up, but it's still so dark, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but again, I I feel like saying that um, that you still need to do like you need to know if whatever you pursuing is even like viable <laughs> like, <laughs> like you don't want to jump on some platform right. and like if there's no hope and you're like oh listen to this and like whoever said you know hang in there for eight months and i think the platform needs to prove that it does make people some kind of money whatever platform you choose to be in and yeah so it has to be a proven platform first <laughs> If it's not a proven platform, there's really then you're just jumping in blind. <laughs> so let me ask you, how do you find the proven platform? I think finding a mentor or someone who's done it already and you see someone who's in, in that field and in that platform and you see that person that is where you want to be, then I think that's a good good gauge. And at the same time, like really understand is 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 the trend there, right? Is there opportunity opportunity there? Will it renew itself? Like, are you too late to it? Like, will you develop the skill to to be good at this this area? So I think all that. Like, I didn't know any social media. I started from zero. I didn't have any following. Right. But I knew that back then. Like, I didn't like to do one on one. Like, I didn't believe. What do you mean you didn't like to do one on one? You mean one-on-one -on -one sales, sales, like what I, I, I did? I don't... <laughs> so, so, hey, I'm going to throw down a challenge right here. I'm going to throw down a challenge for this year. I bet you a thousand bucks Yeah. if you hit a hundred doors in one day, I'll yeah. give you a thousand bucks. You just have to talk to 
probably like 40 people right and sell the product yeah we would do it to to do a knock on doors yeah i'll give you a map a territory and say i'll give you a thousand bucks cash i'll bring yeah. cash yeah to knock on doors and sell to knock on doors you know what i'll do I'll give you a thousand dollars in one dollar coins in like a huge bag, and I'll make sure the bag has a dollar sign on it. I don't know. I feel like would you I, do it? Would I do it for a thousand bucks? Yeah. Maybe. Not. Can, we, can we can we make a video out of it? Can we like free content? I'll decide what you sell. You decide what I sell. Yeah, I'm gonna sell what you sell. Oh my god. Um, I'll have to see what it is, because if it's like a shitty product, then I don't know if it's even worth it. <laughs> this is you just have to sell it. This is the point where I, mm -hmm. I'm saying, like, if the platform, if the thing is even worth, like, doing it. <laughs> if uh, you're selling a Teletubby, like, I, I, it doesn't matter if you're selling a thousand doors or, like, you're selling a ten thousand doors, okay? Well, here's the thing. I'm not going to let you sell a one thousand dollar computer for 20 bucks, okay? <laughs> like, <laughs> that does not make sense. <laughs> like, that's what I mean. Like, it has to be, like... You know, it brings value to people yeah. and people want it. So the interesting part is instead of selling one on one, yeah. going down my path, you wanted to sell to the masses. You want to sell to more yeah. people. Yeah. Okay. Um, have you sold one on one before? Uh, yeah. You have, right? Yeah, yeah. What would you say is the ratio? Let's say out of a thousand customers, yeah. how many of them do you sell one on one and how many of them do you sell via webinars, online, telephone, or you know, one too many. Like the ratio wise? Yeah, ratio wise. I would say maybe like 20% is like one on one and then right. some other Right, 80% is the yeah. fixed um, online, you know, yeah. online yeah, yeah, yeah. sale. Okay, so let me let me ask you this. What would you say is the biggest difference? One is always there and is searchable. So I believe in SEO. Yeah, search engine optimization, and that's why I make all my content that's searchable, mm. solving someone's problem. I mean, like everyone now, if you have yeah. a problem, you go on to Google and you type it on, right? And you'll find solution. Right. And that's what I made. So I wanted to be the solution of your problem. Yeah. Let's say you can't sleep, then I want to be the solution of helping you sleep. And you want to rank number one. True. Yeah. So it's not just by one piece of content too. Like I make like probably like 10 to 20 piece of content based on solving your sleeping problem. So how many solutions are there to my sleeping problem? There's only one, but there's yeah. so many ways of wording it. There's right. so many ways of optimizing the SEO so that whatever you search will land mm -hmm. on me. So then one, I'll build credibility. Second, you'll see maybe this is the solution yeah. to your sleeping problem, right? Okay. So that's why I feel like a video would, or social media would build more, I guess, like credibility. Right. Instead of knocking on your door. Like, imagine if I can knock on your door like a, a million times and you said no is no, right? But then if you're able to search things of, around this topic and you always see me somewhere around those search, that you don't, you don't get to say no. Google right. just put me in front of you. Yeah. So to me, like knocking doors, but if I want to sell to you, you might just say no to me five times and you probably blacklist me mm -hmm. and you probably like make sure you don't get in front of my door yeah. anymore, right? But with internet and social media, you don't really get to block me out. Know? <laughs> like as long as I create content around your problem, Google or the search engine will put me in front of you to solve your problem. Yeah, I think, I think we go back to it. It's the basics of finding a problem. With sales, it's the same yeah. thing. We call it a need. Yeah, yeah. A need is the same thing as a problem. Yeah. Except a need is when you have a desire to do something, right? right? So when you do the SEO, you're putting yourself in front of people with a need, potential problem. They have that desire. Now, let me ask you this. How do you rank on SEO today? How do I rank on SEO? Yeah, like, like, like personally or what, 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 what do you personally do? Because before it was pretty easy. Right. It wasn't, there weren't a lot of competition, right. especially with tail keywords. But today, a lot of people are getting into business. Right. There's huge layoffs right now in the tech industry. There's like 180,000. Right. The last time I talked to somebody. And just imagine they don't have a job. They want a side hustle or they want a full-time hustle. They got to go do something. 
I'm pretty sure a lot of them are going to use the internet, either Amazon FBA, Shopify, or SEO, social media marketing, as a way to generate income. So how would you still rank the same problem if you were to start today? Niching down. How far down do you niche? Very niche down, like very yeah. So for very example, detail, like sleep is a problem for me. How detailed would you be? Sleeping, mm -hmm. uh, sleeping problem for, let's say, uh, men that are in their <laughs> 30s, you know, like right. um, that tried sleeping pills and yoga. Like I'm getting very niche down, right? Wow, that's pretty niche. But that's what I mean, right? But like after you niche down, I feel like you you have to like create shit ton of content in that particular I mean, niche. You have to yeah, so you have to go up. So once you go down, you have to go up that way. So I'm just serving that group of person. Like I'm just talking to you. That's it. No other people. If you're not men in your 30s that try yoga and sleeping pills, then you're not my demo. Mm -hmm. But if you're like 30s, try sleep and pills and yoga or meditation, whatever, right? Right. Then you are you're like, oh yeah, that's me, right? Yeah. And th those group of people were more likely to relate to what I have to say and what I have to present. Okay. And more likely, you know, I'll I'll hit the point. I'm like, you know, screw yoga, screw meditation. You don't. It doesn't work for you. And you've tried mm -hmm. two pills and you're still looking in the ceiling at 3 a.m. But guess what? You know, there is a way for you to sleep like a baby no, tell me. by 10 p.m. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> so, so, Getting so I, knocked on the head. <laughs> so I got your attention, right? right? So if you're those people who suffered those things already, it's all about copy as well, I feel like. So I have to really talk to your pain point and then to hook on to the pain point that you've tried already and then offering that that want that that you want mm -hmm. and saying if you if that's someone you know if that's you you know click the link <laughs> or watch the next video or, let, or let me ask like you that. so in today SEO world right. how do you go in and define the problem I don't think we, we need to define the problem the, the, the problem is always like the, the, the problem and desire is always there you just need to find the right one that you have the solution for and then from there, you just want to offer value to them. Mm -hmm. And then from there, you 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 have a you know a offer, and then they were more likely to buy. So no matter if it's like supplement or a course or I don't know anything you want to sell them. Yeah, I, I mean, for example, you talked about sleeping problem. Right. For men in their mid thirties who have tried yoga that didn't work. Right. That's a very niche keyword problem to have, yeah. right? So. So how do you come across that? How do you find that? Google. Google. Oh, so you use Google yeah. Trends for yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Google and Trends, then keywords. Keyword trending. trending and There's a lot of like um, programs that gives you keyword search, not just like, yeah, there's a lot of programs. So you do a keyword search first. Yeah, yeah, so let's yeah. say if you're in a health niche and then you niche down, you figure out, should I be in sleeping yeah. niche or should I be in losing weight yeah. or should I be in curing nearsightedness? There's so many. Like, There's so many, right? And then you figure that, and then you niche down. Okay, yeah, well, yeah. let me figure out the sleeping niche who are for men 35. Yeah. And maybe that keyword is very competitive. Yeah. And then you niche down more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Until you get to a keyword that's not very competitive, but there's still a market. Exactly. And then exactly. you start building products for that kind of people. Exactly. Exactly. There you go. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Like, I think that it's all about mm -hmm. solving problems with, right. with a right angle. Then you'll find your buyers. Okay. Can you give me an example of that? What do you mean the right angle? Just like how, like pain point. Pain oh, point. So you find a pain point, yeah. and then you're like, I have this brand name melatonin for you. Yeah. And this melatonin is made by holy water from <laughs> Italy. Yeah, <something> like <laughs> from the holy grail. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're guaranteed to pass out. Yeah. Yeah. It has to speak to them. It has yeah. to speak to that demographic where they really like oh that's me right that's that's what I want oh where can I get it right yeah. now so that that you're you're hooking on that desire okay. or you're just kind of like flaming the desire and then when the desire is right they will just give you the money okay okay so so let's let's shift gears now going back to your story again okay, okay. Um, you were saying that you went through the darkest tunnel 
Yeah. And you came out of it. What happened next? What happened next, I think, is, I think, looking back, is celebrating. I, I don't feel like I celebrated enough in terms of getting out of the tunnel, because I think that part is very important. Because if we don't celebrate, or I didn't celebrate enough, it just feels like it, it, that tunnel didn't end. Can I ask you, how do you define getting out of the tunnel? Uh, I think everyone is different, but defining What's it, your definition? By, by at least having seen some money. <laughs> like, like, let's like, see a dollar. Have one dollar yeah. coming in. Well, more ten dollars <laughs> coming in. Like more than that, maybe like you, you finally found your way of like selling that that product that I have to mm -hmm. offer, right? And then it, it proves itself that there is that market. There is. I finally found that demographic. That so then you see the money coming in. Then it's more likely it works. Getting yeah. traction. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you started something. It was through the tunnel. It was really dark. You couldn't find what the demand is. And by having money coming in, you found traction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when you talk about celebrating, what, what do you mean by not celebrating early enough? I, I feel like I didn't celebrate where I just kept on going. And then, but I think celebration on, on the success really helps your mental, <laughs> like, clarity. And yeah. like, you, I actually made it happen, right? And it reveals the the passion. It reveals the motivation to keep going on. Can, can you go in detail about that? Let's say, what happened? How come you didn't celebrate it? And how did that affect, how did that impact your passion and your mind? I think I didn't celebrate and it affected me to burn out way faster. Like, although I saw the light at the end of the tunnel and I ran to the light and and just keep going but then i didn't celebrate so that i didn't feel like that was a light it just felt like i was running you know <laughs> and, and okay i just burned out really quick right afterwards well, so how when you burned out very fast very quickly what was it like what do you do when you get burnt out do you stay down for a day or so or do you go, do you just have a distaste and disgust for work? You just don't want to do anything and you just end up partying or like, what, what do you do? I, I didn't, I, because I didn't celebrate, I didn't really acknowledge that it was a success. And then I just kept on going. It, it made me burn out way faster. And yeah. at that burnout stage where I should have went even faster, I was out of gas already. How do you burn out? What do you mean how bad? Like how? What do you do when you burn out? I just need rest. <laughs> like, so I just can't work anymore. When you get burned out, you just sleep for twenty four hours. I, I I couldn't work anymore. It was just too much. Like I, I just can't. No, I I just need rest. Rest. And you, you just sleep. Just turned off. Like what do you mean rest? Turn off. Like what do you do? Like do you? Do yoga? Do you not do anything? Do you sit on the sofa? Do you read a book? Do you play video games or do you watch some YouTube videos? Netflix I think it's every, like yeah, all all the above. <laughs> um, so when Ben burns out, he binges on YouTube. He then binges on Netflix. He then drinks a whole ton, parties a whole ton, and then he rests and sleeps. Yeah, and every, but but during that time, because I yeah. I think. I, I was supposed to go faster because I was out of gas. Like I didn't stop for the gas station. Right. Like if I saw the gas, like you know, let's say the light was the gas station, but I didn't. Yeah. I didn't stop to re re repump, and I just thought, oh, I'm not at empty yet. I right. can still go, and I didn't think of, oh, I'm just at the starting point. Like I, looking back, the light is only the starting point. So let me ask you, for the audience here, what? would you recommend as a set of tangible steps to do when they're going through the dark tunnel of entrepreneurship? I think it's very important to, to have a balance still during that dark tunnel side in terms of your physical and your mental state. That's why like you see a lot of like entrepreneurs saying like meditation or like workout 
or just being in nature helps a lot, no matter how big your 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 your, your company is. Like this. <laughs> being in nature. Um, I think all that really helps with the mental, because we. I think at the end of the that day, like entrepreneurs, like mental game. I don't think it's more of a physical thing. It's all in the mindset. If your mind is not there, then you more likely to burn out mm -hmm. or easily to to be focusing on the negative side then it's all the mindset right yeah but but if your your physical and your mental state can stay like in in intact during that dark tunnel stage then you're more likely to keep on going and going and going like as lo as much as it sounds silly like the process is actually very important like obviously the end of the tunnel is important but like the process make sure you're you're still in one piece you know <laughs> you don't want to burn you know yeah you don't want to get there in five pieces no no so i think that's like looking back like even now i, I no matter what i keep my physical and my mental very intact would you say that you if you were to do it over again okay you would focus more on taking care of yourself than to take I'm care not of the sure business. I, understand. I know you don't understand. I think it's a balance. I think it's a balance. Like a balance of both. Let's be specific. When you say balance, do you mean 80 20 work, rest, or 60 40, 30 70, 10 percent? What do you, you say? Uh, 80 20 maybe? 80 20. Yeah, as long as it's not like, you know, 9 to 1. Yeah. I think it's good. Every I think everyone's different. Like everyone's feeling or you know able to take stress is different. You know what I realized? I discovered that recently something has been on my mind a lot. The hustle culture. Mm. Everyone's talking about it. You know, there's all these motivational speakers talking about it from 20 years ago, and then there's the Gary Vee's, the what is it? The uh, David Goggins. Okay, Jocko Williams. All these guys are talking about hustle. Every day you need to be hustling. Every day you need to be hustling. And you know what? I freaking hustle, man. Right. I fucking hustle. If you want to hustle, we hustle. Yeah. But here's the thing coming out of it. When you're hustling a lot, you do realize that you have blinders on. Right. You're not looking at anything else other than what's in front of you. Right. That could benefit you and it also could destroy you. Okay, yeah. I noticed that when I was doing sales, I I did very well. I did very good. I, I made a lot of money, close over nine figures in my decade as a real estate entrepreneur. But what I realized is I was so focused on the tunnel vision, on generating sales, door knocking. There's all these millions of other ways to build a business. And I wasn't focused on those. I, I wasn't, it wasn't in my mind frame. Right. I could have made more, added more zeros. But you know what? I'm pretty happy where I was with. Right. But I'm just talking about the hustle nature, the message where you have to hustle so hard every single day. You don't sleep. You have to wake up at 5 a.m. It's overrated. It's totally overrated. You know what's underrated? Being smart about decision making, being rational. Let's say you have three choices, okay? And you try to figure out, okay, what, what's a better choice right here? Let's say it's for a color for a product. Would it be blue? What does blue reckon? Uh, what does blue say about this product? Is it yellow or is it orange? Like, what is better? What would deliver the message better? How should I say this thing better? It's actually those thinking times. But even though you're still working, you're not hustling, you're thinking about the product. And sometimes when you talk about going to work, your brain is so powerful. It works by itself. Mm -hmm. You know, when you take a problem to bed, most of the time, try this if you haven't tried it at home. You have a problem, you take it to bed, next day when you wake up, most likely you'll have an answer. Yeah, that's a subconscious mind. Subconscious mind. You let the subconscious mind work. So why do you want to hustle so hard when you can relax or rest your mind more and you can think of way smarter ways to do things and with much greater leverage. I think it's a alignment. Like 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 Bob Proctor always talked about yeah, like it's a, a balance. 
it's, it's about the mm -hmm. using your subconscious mind to help solve your problem. And when we just focus on hustling, we're using the conscious mind only. But the actual like mm -hmm. alignment comes from the subconscious exactly. mind. Exactly. Exactly. So it, it works hand in hand. Yeah. So going back to what you were talking about, we talked about your past. So what about now? Um, where are you now? You're you mentioned that you're pretty happy. You're financially free. You're living. You have locational freedom. You're living the life you want. Tell us about that. <laughs> what do you mean? No, like tell us about uh, tell us about that. Like your everyday life. You know, like what what do you do currently, present day? What's a day in Ben Yim's schedule like? So right now I'm really focusing how's your business? On, on what projects are you working on? Focusing more on content creation. Okay. Because I feel like content is always providing value and branding, mm -hmm. and from that I I focus a lot more on building my branding, just my social media presence, and because as I, as that grows, it helps grow my brand and my just uh, credibility in in terms of my clients, how they look at me, and that actually brings a lot like other opportunity as well. So that like brand deals and like. Yeah. So now, like, other companies see me as an influencer, <laughs> which I never influencer. thought. I never thought of being an influencer, mm -hmm. but like, um, just on, in in making that became slowly became an influencer. So let me ask you. So you have a couple hundred thousand following you on TikTok yeah. right now. What what's your process for creating content, getting those followers, and getting engagement? So I used to do. I did. Um, I did uh, three months of every day, three short form video, consecutively three months. So three per day for three months, mm -hmm. and that blew me up. What were the contents? Well, on my niche, so health niche, so health niche, solving problems, giving value, and but you have to be really consistent. What? Like, can you talk about your niche? Was it help? I know, but. Like when you niche down, was it sleeping uh, problems? Gut health. So I focus okay. mostly on my, our gut. Because, That's pretty niche. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. so because our gut controls how happy you are, yeah. um, how well you sleep, how fat you get, and your immune system. 90% of your immune system is your gut. Wow. 90. So if you want to be strong, you know, uh, be good at stopping the virus, you need to take care of your immune system. And 90% is in your gut. For all the audience who drinks a lot, how would they take care of their gut? Have less sugar. <laughs> so don't drink the sweet pineapple juice mixed with no. alcohol. It's always vodka and soda. Yeah. Or tequila. Sure. <laughs> drink shots. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Uh, yeah. Your immune system is controlled right. by your gut. Your happy hormone. 90% of it is in your gut as well. It's mm -hmm. not in here. Okay. Your gut is your second brain. So that's why I focus on the gut. So I always focus on the gut and I just gave, 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 gave a lot of content and that just blew me up. And I'll always have a lot of engagement. Like reply to your followers, <laughs> reply to your comments. Don't be a snob like, oh, that was a dumb comment. <laughs> oh, that's just a heart. Oh, that's just like, like I wasn't being a snob. I was just, yeah. you know, very, Thankful that they actually engage with me, and I actually in, like talk to them, talk mm -hmm. to them in the comments, and then ask them questions, and then see if it which which point resonated with them, and then from there I took content. They're like they would leave some comments, and then I'll use their comments to make another video. So it kind of just snowballed out. But during those three months, I didn't stop. That's the only focus I did, and then that really blew me up. Let me ask you how many hours were you focused on creating the content? Oh, this should be like editing in and <laughs> responding. When you say shit, then you mean like pretty much the whole day because like yeah, three videos, although it's like a short content, like within two minutes. Yeah, so 30 that, seconds, 60 yeah. seconds per video, right? Uh, 30 seconds to two minutes. Two minutes per video, okay. So, so that's like what? Three times two, that's like six minutes. Yeah. But that, you still need to edit it caption it, cut it, all that. Um, were you the main actor or was or was it more of an infographic? No, it's all me. So so, it's all so, you. so during the first period it's all me. But now but now I, I, I batch it. 
So I batch like a whole month worth in maybe three days. Okay. So, so I'll sit in one setting, I'll film for the whole day or the whole month, and then I just batch it. And then I edit in one day, film in one day, and then post in one day. <laughs> so would you would you say that if you have started brand new account again, would you use this strategy over filming every single day strategy? Yes and no. Uh, for people who are not really good at social media, I would say that they need to have that practice first. So like practice makes perfect. So do it on a regular base, maybe maybe not every day, but maybe yeah. like three times a week and then batch it in those three days and then do it like per week like that. And then when you get very comfortable, then do it in like months worth of batches. So now I do like one month for that batch, wow. one month batch, and then once you get really good at that, I outsourced it. So I only film because I'm the only like um, talent, right? Yeah. Other stuff is outsourced. Like, um, yeah, this it could be very cheap. Like, I I hire my team all in like Middle East. Okay. But interesting. That's the first thing I heard. The yeah. first time I heard Middle East, mostly it's the Philippines, Thailand, no. Vietnam, India. Middle East is the best. They're, really? They're smart. Yeah. I. I, again, I've been to Morocco, I, yeah, I, I've been to Egypt, they're intelligent. They're smart yeah. and they're fast and... They're aggressive too. They're very, they are very aggressive. They're very motivated. Yeah, yeah. So my, my editing yeah. is done in Middle, Middle East. Um, I don't post my own stuff now. I, I outsource that as well. So I have a, a VA that does that. Right. So I'm the only one who's creating content. So I think if like... Like again, that yeah. that requires a lot of money, right? Mm -hmm. If you're just starting right now, maybe not the best choice, but it is uh, it should be something that is down the road. Let me ask you, how much, um, how much expenses? Let's say, let's take your business, right. okay? How much revenue is generated through your content versus from other sources? I say right now it's mostly hundred percent. Not, I want to say 100%, like 80 20. 80 20. So 80% 80, 80 is generated through your content, organic yeah, yeah, content. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about your, are you, are you buying ads? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So 20% is from your ad revenue, right? Uh, no, so ads, I would say it was still from the. the oh, the from the 80%. Yeah. What, what's the other 20%? Referrals. Oh, okay. So Wait, word of mouth. Word of mouth from the people that have done business with you in the past. Or my, my, my current. Your like current clients. circle. Yeah. Okay, I see. But your current client came from contacts. Not all of them. Like some of okay. them are still they they know me they they have this problem yeah. and they need to solve this problem they just want to try. It's pretty interesting because you started off adding oil to the flame, right? And you build this incredible content machine. It took you three months to build, and once you finished building it, you contracted it out, you automated it. So now you just film for you film for a day, you edit for a day. And you can spend the other 28 somewhat days working on the business, expanding your business, or just live like a free soul. Yeah, I would say so. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good. So I think we're almost at the time. So if you can tell the audience how you did it in two sentences, what would you say? Two sentences yeah. about what, like the whole business? Yeah, about the whole business, what you got, advice for the young, for the next generation, two sentences. Maybe I'll give you one more, three. Uh, stay consistent. Mm -hmm. And, well, this is hard. Three sentences. Is this, is this like a, a usual thing yeah, for, for everyone? Yeah, usual thing for everybody. <laughs> stay consistent and keep learning. Mm -hmm. And take massive action. All right, awesome. Okay, thanks for coming to the show. Thank you. And thank you for watching the thank Jungles you. Layer. Sorry. <laughs> hey, and thank you for watching the Jungles Layer podcast. Oh, thank you for watching the Jungles Layer business podcast.